Hello and welcome to Friendly Finance. Anyone who reads portfolio theory is bound to come across the double summation formula for finding the standard deviation of a portfolio and that is what we are going to be talking about in this uh, little video. The formula uses the asset weights and covariances between asset pairs. And from time to time, some of my students have asked me for a demonstration on how to open the double summation. And in this brief video, I'm going to do that for a portfolio of two assets. Well, one could do it for as many assets as possible, but as will be evident in a short while, the process goes on getting lengthier as we increase the number of assets in the portfolio. So after a while, we would start feeling the need of a computer program to do it. So what I'm going to do here now is to assume that we understand all about covariances and stuff and I'm going to go straight ahead with simplifying the double summation for a two asset portfolio and I'm going to leave it to you as homework to try to do it for three asset and a four asset portfolio. So now when we think in terms of a portfolio that comprises of n assets, the first thing that we should ask ourselves is how many pairs of covariances can be computed between the assets. Let us look at a portfolio that comprises of two assets and see how many pairs of covariances can we get. We can find out the covariance between asset 1 and 1. We can do that for asset 1 and 2. We can do that for asset 2 and 1 and then for 2 and 2. So that is going to give us four pairs of covariances. Uh, what we need to realize is that the covariance between 1 and 1 is simply the variance of asset 1 and the covariance between 2 and 2 is simply the variance of asset 2. Now in these pairs of covariances, let's call the first asset as asset i. Let's give it a name and let's call the second asset as asset j. So that the i becomes 1 in this combination, i is still 1 in this combination, i becomes 2 in this combination and i is still 2 in this combination. Uh, j is 1 in this combination, j is 2 in this combination, j is 1 here and j is 2 here. So if we give a name as i and j to our assets, then we can write the formula for portfolio's standard deviation as this, where on the left hand side we have the standard deviation of the portfolio and on the right hand side we have a term that has been raised to the power of half. Raising it to the power of half, my friends, tell us um, tells us that we are taking a square root of this term here. Inside the square bracket, we have a double summation sign about uh, which we are going to talk shortly and then following the double summation, we have xi and xj which are the weights for asset i and j respectively and then we have a sigma of i and j which is uh, the covariance between asset i and j. So basically, what we are doing in this formula is that for all combinations of covariances between assets i and j, that is for all pairs i, j, we are taking a sum of this term x i times x j times covariance between i and j. Now since this sum is being taken uh, for all i's and all j's at the same time, that is why we have two summation signs and that is what we call as the double summation. And to simplify a double summation is not a very tricky thing. It simply means taking the sum of a sum. What we are going to do is we are going to go to an equation editor and try to simplify this formula for a two asset portfolio. So let me switch over to the equation editor here where I have pre-written this formula for you and we are going to now simplify it for a two asset portfolio. So let us start a square bracket. Inside the square bracket, let us write down the first summation as it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write i is varying from 1 to 2 because it's a 2 asset portfolio. So n is 2 and inside now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a sum of all for all j's. I'm going to take a sum of this term here. So let me write inside a small bracket and then let me put another summation sign and say for all j's that vary from 1 to 2. I'm going to take a sum of this term inside this small bracket. So and we should not forget to raise this thing to the power of half because that tells us that we are taking a square root of this thing. Now let us continue further. Let us uh, start another square bracket here in this step and let us keep this summation as it is the i summation. Let us not 
disturb that for the moment. Let's let's say i is varying from 1 to 2 and inside this small bracket now let us solve the j summation. So, we are going to get rid of the summation sign here and we are going to allow j in this term to become 1 first and then we are going to allow it to become 2. So, let us start doing that. We write an x here and this i we keep as it is because we are not dealing with the i summation as yet and then we write another x in the foot of which we need to write a number for j and we are allowing j to become 1. So, we write a 1 and then we are going to put a sigma and in the subscript we are going to write i because we are not doing anything with i at all at the moment and then for j we are going to write a 1. Then we are going to put a plus sign because we need to write this term over again and allow j to become 2. So, we write x and in the foot of x we write an i leaving it unchanged and then we write another x and for j this time we write the value 2 and then we are going to put a sigma and in the subscript we are going to write i as it is and for j we are going to write a 2. After that we should not forget to raise this thing to the power of half to take the square root. Now, let us continue simplifying. We have only one summation left now and that should not pose us any problem at all. So, inside the square bracket, let us open up the i summation. First of all, for this entire thing, i is going to become 1 and then for this entire thing again, i is going to become 2. Let us write it down. So, we write an x and this time now we are going to allow i to become 1. So, i becomes 1. We already have x j as x 1 here. So, we write x and we simply say 1 and then we are going to write a summation. Uh, we are going to write a sigma and in the subscript we are going to write 1 for i and 1 for j. And then we are going to put a plus sign and we are going to write this item here now x but this time i has been allowed to become 1 then another x and this is for j which is already 2. So, we write a 2 and then we put a sigma and in the foot of it we are going to write 1 for i uh, and 2 for j. Um, it's giving me some problem here. So, let me get rid of this and put a subscript here in the foot of which I should write 1 for i and 2 for j. So, I am done with that and then I need to rewrite this term over again by allowing i to become 2. So, I write an x and in the subscript this time I say i has become 2, j remains 1. So, I write another, another x 1 here then I am going to say sigma and in the subscript I am going to say 2 for i and 1 for j then I am going to put a plus sign and I am going to write this second term over again, but this time allowing i to become 2. So, um, I am going to write an x and what I need to do is to write a subscript um, here. So, I go here and write a 2 here and then I am going to write another x and in the subscript j is 2 already this one here. So, I am going to go ahead and put a sigma here and in the foot of it I am going to write 2 for i and 2 for j and that then I am going to raise this entire thing to the power of half so that we take the square root. Now, what I am going to do is to write down the standard deviation of the portfolio one more time. Let me copy it here from here and paste it here and then inside the square bracket what I am going to do is to simplify these terms further. If you look at the first term here this one you will realize that x 1 times x 1 is going to become x 1 squared. So, what I am going to write here is x and then I am going to write x 1 squared and then this is covariance between 1 and 1 that simply means variance of asset 1. So, let us write here sigma sign and then we need to write it for the variance of 1. So, 1 and 2 this becomes variance of 1 and then let us look at the 
last term in this step here x2 times x2 is going to become x2 squared so let us do that here x2 squared and then I'm going to have the covariance between 2 and 2 which simply means the variance of asset 2 and that is what I'm going to write here variance of asset 2 and then I'm going to look at my middle terms here I'm going to put a plus sign and I'm going to look at this term this one here and this one here and if I look at them I realize that both of them are same so I have the same term two times over so I write two times x and in the foot of it I write one and then I write another x and in the foot of it I write a two and then I'm going to put a sigma and then I'm going to write 1 and 2 and then raise this thing to the power of half and that simplifies it for two assets. Thank you very much my friends. Bye-bye.